What's up, guys? I have the power! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jonathan, this is Lewis. And this is Superhero Chat. Chat. I like it. Yeah, that's good. We need to put that at the front of every video. It's almost like we're trying to time it, which we're we actually did. That was totally spontaneous. <laughs> Anyways, um, which we're not usually. We're going to talk about Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, he wants to talk about it. I'm going to sit here and, and critique and him. Do most of the talking because you know more about it than I do. So, <clears throat> there's a lot of... We love DC Comics. We'll start there. Because um, yes. that's important. It's our favorite. So, yeah. we're going to talk about... Uh, if you're new here, we are a little biased toward DC. We do love Marvel. We love Marvel. I love me some Fantastic Four, and I love certain X-Men characters. I think Spider-Man's cool. Um, yeah. Captain America is amazing. Love Captain America. Yeah. Spider-Man's uh, great. Iron Man. I, who doesn't love a dude in a suit of armor? Iron, Iron Man. Fist is one of my favorites. Yeah. Anywho. Um, the Invaders. <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's a bunch Forget of... where uh, I was going with that. There's been a bunch of stories in DC that we haven't liked. That's right. And so... I'm looking at you, New 52. We, I thought it would be cool if we just talked about some of the old stories that were really good or bad. And just talk about what the, what happened in them, what the general story was, and uh, why we liked or didn't like them. Yeah. So, uh, today we're going to talk about Infinite, the Crisis Christ on Infinite Earth, Earth, which is by Marvel Wolfman and George, George Perez, Perez. Uh, who also wrote this book, which is... Uh, he can't, there you go. The new, uh, new Teen Titans, number one. Yeah. That's but actually why George Perez, see. in volume two, um, took time off from the actual New Teen Titans to draw the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh. Yeah. So that's why you ended up getting, uh, he did the first se uh, storyline, the Trigon stuff. Um, and then he took time off and a bunch of different people, Jose Garcia Lopez, uh, took over for him there. Okay, so Crisis on Infinite Earth. Um, this is the first major overarching um, company-wide storyline that DC did. Which is why we're starting with that. Yeah. Um, it has a ground. Yeah, I probably want that. Has a, <laughs> I have no idea what the sound sounds like. So if you didn't hear me before. Hello. I think, I think <laughs> you can hear us because we talk loud. Yeah, here we go with this again. <laughs> we have way too much fun making these videos. Because um, this is what we do anyway. We just don't usually shove microphones in each other's faces. Um, anyway, so DC started with the Justice Society and those characters in the 40s. Then superhero comics kind of fell off as far as popularity goes. And so you had horror and romance books and westerns that were popular in the uh, late 40s, early 50s. Um... And then, in the mid-50s, DC introduced uh, the second Flash, a.k.a. Barry Allen. And um, they were off to the races, and I say it that way on purpose, um, because there was a renaissance in superhero comics. Uh, that was officially the marker of the Silver Age. And so, <clears throat> pretty much has been for the last uh, 60 years. And uh, anyways... Uh, DC then reintroduced the, the characters from the 40s, but they did so in such a way that they no longer occupied the same Earth. They were from a different realm, a different uh, part of the multiverse. And so the stories got really confusing. Because is Superman the same guy that he was when he was created, or is he a new guy now? Um, and how do we tell the difference? And where is the end of one Superman and the beginning of the other? It just became really confusing for new readers, or at least that was the argument that was being made and put forward at the time. And DC wanted to streamline uh, their, their, their company and their characters, and so they wanted everybody on the same Earth, and so they came up with the Crisis on Infinite Earths. And they found a way to incorporate all of their characters and more or less fit them into place. The problems start after Crisis on Infinite Earths, though, because the idea sounds beautiful in, in um, theory. Uh, no, through no part of Marv Wolfman's fault, that didn't work out well. So what happened is uh, this, this character, the Anti-Monitor, 
um, decides to destroy the the uh, regular matter universe as because he was from the antimatter universe um, and he was going to destroy it and restart the universe in his own image. Um, he started at uh, it's, uh, Krona, a scientist on Oa, sought to see the beginning of the universe and how things started. Um, and he triggered the release of the anti-monitor um, from the anti-matter universe. And so he came over and he started destroying universes. Like, there was uh, Earth-S, which was where Shazam and uh, the Marvel family were from. Um, you had Earth-X, which was the Freedom Fighters Earth. So Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters, they were on a, a separate world. Uh, you had Earth 2, which had the older heroes, Justice Society, and, and the Infinity Inc. crew, who were the children of the Justice Society. That's also where the original Golden Age Superman was from. Um, and then, of course, Superman proper was from Earth 1. And then, let's see, um, Earth 3 was the, the crime syndicate, which is like this evil version of the Justice League. Um, and then you had a world where Superboy was the only superhero on the planet. And uh, so all these heroes come together in this huge fight. Um, spoiler alert, Supergirl dies fighting the Antimonitor, saving Superman. Flash, Barry Allen, he dies stopping the Antimonitor universe. Uh, the Antimonitor's, um, sorry. Well, that's where you get the... Uh for Supergirl, you get that kind of picture of Superman, Superman holding, holding her. her. Yeah, just you like on this cover. Kind of see it on there. Um, right here, sort of. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was meant to clean up the continuity and reset the universe, and it did a good job for the most part. The problems occur when you don't have Wonder Woman showing up till later. So like. They, they then do miniseries or miniseries within the regular series. So they did uh, Man of Steel with John Byrne rewriting Superman's origin where there's no Supergirl, there's no um, Superboy, uh, things of that nature. Like All that was done away with. Um, then Batman had the year one storyline in his uh, main comic. Um, detect uh, No, that was in Batman. 404, I think, was the start of that. So that that all comes, and um, it retells their origin and basically sets up the new status quo. Um, the only problem is they wanted Wonder Woman to debut now and not in the past and then bring her up to present, kind of like the Batman and Superman stories did. And so that, that threw off a lot of stuff because there's the gap of time between Superman and Batman debuting the Justice League forming, which Wonder Woman was a part of the Justice League founding, yeah. and but she's showing up now, and the Justice League has already existed, and and then um, Hawkman was a similar situation. His continuity was screwed up um, because they introduced him, and then they basically were like, oh no, this is the Justice Society Hawkman, and then he got reintroduced again, and they're like, no, this is supposed to be the the Hawkman from the, the 80s and they screwed that up and so Hawkman has been in a perpetual screw up of continuity <laughs> since then. Um, I still love the character. I um, think the new uh, series is helpful with that. Yes, I agree. Uh, just they're just all of them squishing into, it all together. Uh, all into his uh, um, backstory. What's it called? The um, reincarnation story. Right. Which, thank you, Jeff Johns, that's probably the one thing that you did um, well. And that's Venditti, isn't it? Venditti's writing it now, right. but the reincarnation theory came from Jeff Johns. He okay. wrote that okay. uh, in the early 2000s. Um, so anyway, all these characters were now fresh and new. Um, they had slight differences from what they did before. Some things were changed, like Ma and Pa Kent were still alive, whereas in the original Superman stories, they had long been dead. They just, but John Byrne introduced that, and that's one of my favorite things about that series. I love that Ma and Pa Kent are there, and that Clark can go and talk to them whenever he wants to. Yeah. Um, I just think that's a brilliant uh, addition to the mythos. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to think of other things. Um, so, like, it's this sprawling story where heroes and villains are having to team up because otherwise it's the end of everything. Um, it, it'd be the functional equivalent of Galactus coming to eat the universe and not just a particular Earth. Yeah. Um, and all the all the heroes and stuff have to team up in Marvel to take out Galactus, who's about to eat the universe. Um, that I mean, that'd be the functional equivalent there. Um, and it really started a, a theme with DC where now I get crises all the time. Unfortunately, that's <laughs> true. Um, so... Uh, uh, we won't talk about this, but uh, Zero Hour came out in the early 90s. Uh, Dan Jurgens wrote it and drew it uh, in an effort to help clear up some continuity issues that had developed in the five years <laughs> since Crisis uh, was was put out, or ten, I don't know, five or ten years. I can't remember the exact date. And then in the early 2000s, they had Infinite Crisis, which was to reintroduce aspects that they wanted back in the thing um, that only served to really confuse things but Crisis did a great job um, and it led into uh, some other really great stories like Legends which I don't know if we'll talk about that now or not but ultimately um, it, it, it did in one sense accomplish what it set out to do it cleared away a lot of the, the dross as it were that's just a fancy word for the impurities on the top of metal as you're melting gold down um, and you scrape the dross off that's the the impurities in the metal so that you have a pure gold or a pure silver or whatever sorry to get technical I just <laughs> you people might not know what the word dross means so I, I, I'm not I'm not doubting your intelligence I'm just trying to help because if I use fancy words I want people to know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> But no, um, so it's 12 issues. Uh, they're actually about, they may have just re-released uh, a new 30th, and 35th anniversary. I don't know. They're getting ready to, to re-release that in a, in a nice hardcover edition. Uh, so look for that on Amazon, um, you know, if you're interested. Because uh, you can get it for super cheap. I think the last I saw it was like 30 bucks. Yeah. So, you get a nice hardcover book for 30 bucks uh, with that story in it. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's excellent. The, uh, the artwork alone is, is yeah. worth $30. George Perez is. Uh, he goes out of his way to draw as many people in scenes as he possibly can. <laughs> and if you see it, you're just like, holy crap, how did he get all of those people in there? And I still know who these people yeah. are. Um, he's that good. Um Arguably one of the greatest artists, of comic book artists of all time. Oh, definitely. Um, I, I mean, he's one of my favorite. Uh, top, definitely top five. And, and I think he kind of started off with DC really just trying to uh, make good continuity. Right. And uh, they had already introduced the multiverse theory um, long before that. But, um, oh, yeah. that I mean, it was within a... Three years of Barry Allen's introduction that we got the Flash of Two Worlds. Yeah, and uh, this one is um, it's really the the biggest crossover that comic books have seen yeah. to that point. And I um, mean, as far as scale goes, it probably is still the largest that's ever been done. Yeah, now, I haven't read it yet, um, but I've heard nothing but great things about it, and I love Wolfman Perez. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, tell you, it'll hurt your head. <laughs> it's uh, so good, but but if you can hang with it, you will have like suddenly this. this it's like an info dump about DC's history that as you read it, you'll be like, huh? Like, because Marv Wolfman is good about cluing you into what's important. Yeah. Um, so I found that out just from the Nineteen Titans. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, it's a. It's one of the um, the greats as far as stories go. Um, the artwork's just amazing. I mean, if you haven't seen the cover, uh, it's that's not even the cover, right? I mean, that's a uh, that's the cover that's, of the paper uh, the trade paperback. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if you see the cover of that, and if you've seen pictures of it, it's just 
Go or, go to your uh, local comic store. I'll figure out how to point them in. Um, go to your local comic store. They have you, it for a dollar. Yeah, the they've show. got the first issue for a dollar. It's part of the um, dollar books. What is it called? Dollar, dollar comics. comics. That's I think true believer. But that's, that's Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> yeah. So uh, DC is just putting out dollar comics randomly. This is one of the first ones, I think. Okay, so I don't know how Brandon still seen, had one. I haven't seen them in a while. Okay. Or I haven't seen them before I came to Brandon's shop, so I didn't know that DC was even doing it. Oh, okay. So, so I think it's pretty new. Go out and get it. Um, It's probably still on the, the newsstand somewhere. And it's a dollar. And it's a dollar. That's a great price. I mean, <laughs> that alone is worth worth supporting your local comic store over. That's right, that's right. Um, And dig through the And you probably bin. order more if you want one, so. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Dig through your uh, dollar bin. You might find some uh, excellent reads there too. So, <laughs> but um, overall thoughts, how it compares to other stories. It feels epic in in, in the best possible way. Um, there there as I read it, there was no letdown. Um, it was the most epic thing they'd ever done. Right, and it still feels like the it still feels like the most epic thing they've ever done. Um, I feel like every. Uh, crossover that they do um, really wants to be that in importance but it's not and so when they fail to live up to that standard um, it's kind of like the prequels tried with the original trilogy and right. the sequels tried with the original trilogy right if you just go to tell a good story we'll accept that you're not crisis on infinite earth <laughs> right but that's another topic <laughs> that's right yeah but I'm just saying like Legends scale and scope the the sort of follow up miniseries um, the following year did not at all set out to be as large and epic as this, right? And it worked in its favor. And then a couple of years later, we had uh, the Millennial story or Millennium story, which half of that story is excellent. The other half. It'll fry your brain. <laughs> and, and you know, uh, Steve, Steve Englehart, the guy who wrote it, excellent comic book writer, he introduced some really cool um, aspects to the Avengers, the Justice League, um, Green Lantern stuff. Uh, it's, it's good comics. He was on his way out at this point. Um, DC was making him put some stuff in. He was being forced to change some things. And so... Half of the story is good, the other half, he wasn't really trying. <laughs> and it tell, I mean, you could tell. Um, and then uh, the invasion storyline where these alien groups get together and try to destroy the planet Earth for an undescribed... Uh, it's in the story, I'm not trying to spoil it for you because it's worth checking out. That's a big fat three issue storyline, so that one's easy to track down. We'll probably talk about those more in the future, but yeah, um, yeah. If, if you want DC at its absolute best um, in this epic storyline, this this is the one I would tell you to track down because yeah. everything else has tried to be that since then, as far as the epic nature of it. I think they're going to be uh, doing. Well, they said they're going to do Crisis on Infinite Earths in the uh, CW. Oh yes, universe. that's coming this year. Yeah, so, Christmas time, I think. Uh, so this will be a good primer to compare it to. That's right. You can go read, read that from your local comic book store. That's right. And I have seen I've seen some uh, behind the scenes shots of the actors playing various roles, and Brandon yeah. Routh still looks amazing as Superman. So Superman Returns, Superman. I don't have a whole lot of complaints yeah. about the character. Uh, there's plenty to complain about in the movie. Um, but the character, I thought he did a great job. Yeah, no, so. he, he def like he was Superman for me for a long time. Nice. So it was one of the first ones I'd seen. Yeah. So I mean, Christopher Reeve is still the best. Definitely. Actually. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but he definitely looks the part. No, he does such a great job. So. He's a good Clark too, I thought. Um, so uh, yeah, go grab Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, read it. Unpack it. Tell us what you think. Um, if you think it's too convoluted. Ask me questions and I'll explain it to you and make yeah. it less convoluted. That's right. We'll answer those. That's, That's what right. we're here for. That's so right. if you're in here, go ahead and subscribe. Join the family. Uh, if you uh, if 
you enjoyed that, um, or if you like wrestling, if not, or you hated it. Let us know in the comments. We'd love to, to see what why you think that. Uh, give us a like if you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.